In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create the rendering you see here. Now, I'm not going to be teaching the modeling of the text. I'm just going to be teaching the light placement and the shaders. It's all relatively simple. Now, the scene consists of four lights, two area lights, a directional light, and a point light. I'm using Mentoray MIA material for shaders, and I'm rendering with Final Gather on. So to start off, the first thing I did was create a plane and then import my geometry for the logo. Um, the next thing I did was create my main area light. And I set its intensity to 50. Um, the decay rate is set to linear. Now I know linear isn't technically accurate, but in an image like this I feel it's okay to void the natural law of physics. Um, shadows are set to ray trace shadows. The shadow rays are set to 1, but if you were to do a full quality rendering instead of a preview rendering as I've done here, you would want to increase that to keep the shadow edges looking crisp instead of um, ragged. The next thing I did was go down to the Mentoray tab and under Area Light, make sure you check Use Light Shape. Now this makes it a Mentoray Area Light and it, it enhances the way the light is spread around the scene. Once again, the samples are set to preview quality and you should increase them if you decide to go about and do your final rendering. The second light here is really just been placed behind the image to try and um, brighten up the shadow areas cast by our first um, area light. Its intensity is set to 16 and again the decay rate is set to linear. It does not have shadows on in any shape or form. This light does not cast a shadow. And again, it's been set to render like a, a mentor ray area light by checking use light shape. The next light I added was a directional light. I added this simply because the, with the two area lights I had a very harsh light. So I added a directional light coming in basically the same way as the area light is. It's actually, I believe, at a slight angle coming horizontally across the image. And it has a very low intensity. This just helps boost the overall light value, I would say. And again, it doesn't have any shadows. The only light, well, the only two lights with shadows in the scene are our main area light up there and this point light. Now, this point light has been provided, was, I mean, was added to create this purple hue over here and let me render that again and it's not required for this um, tutorial by any means I just added it because I thought it added something to the image you can see it right here it just casts a bit of a hue onto the objects it has shadows on and its shadow rays are set to 1 light radius 0 it doesn't have any mentor options or anything like that it Again, its decay rate is set to linear. Intensity is 1.6. Now on to Final Gather. The first thing I did was check Final Gather, then go down to Final Gathering, and the default accuracy, point density, and interpolation was left alone. And the only thing I changed was the scale. Now, if you increase the scale in Final Gather, it will make it brighter, and the Final ga Gather effects more noticeable, but if you reduce it, it will darken the effects of Final Gather and you'll be relying more on the light you have in the scene. I only wanted Final Gather just to boost the overall light, but not completely override the lights I already had in the scene. So I set it with um, a, val a V value of 0.8. Um, you could probably play with this value to try and adjust the shadow darkness to overall intensity um, portions in the scene, but as I have it right now, I think it creates a slightly overexposed image, but it looks very nice when you have color in the image. So the next thing I did was set the background color of the camera, which you'll be rendering through, to white. That way, that's so the final gatherer can have something to final gather. So I went to view, select camera, um, when, the, in, when, when the attributes editor opens up, or if it isn't already open, just click up here. Roll down to background color, and set it to white. Now on to the shaders. 
Now, all the shaders in this scene are MIA materials with the stone preset set to them. You do that by going to Create, I mean, excuse me, by going to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. When it opens up, make sure you have this set to Create Mental Ray Nodes. Go to Materials, Create an MIA Material, and then go to Presets over here in the Attributes Editor and select stone. I use this preset a lot and it looks really good in renderings like this. And the only thing I changed on the preset was adjusted the color where for almost all the objects I simply set it to white and for the text itself I assigned a purple to it and increased the diffuser roughness. The reason I did this was because the diffuser roughness set at its default value seems to wash out the saturation of the diffuser. I didn't want that, so by increasing it to 1, it keeps the diffuser a little darker and a little more saturated, helping keeping the text um, true to its original intended color. And you can change the color at your free will, of course. You could use a green, for example, or red, yellow, blue, whatever. And I believe that is all for this image. Um, something I should mention about this um, lighting is it's very easy to overexpose if your object doesn't have any um, uh, distinguishable features against the white background. I'll show you an example of this with a white sphere here. Now the logo isn't too bad, but if we were to render it with this sphere here, it becomes very overexposed. Now what you could do would be tweak the area light and the final goop final gather intensity by using that scale option and you could probably get this sphere in the right exposure range but right now it's overexposed with these settings so that's the one thing you have to be careful of so that's basically it thanks for watching this tutorial